Hi, so in a previous video we made this thing, which is a um, free piston Stirling engine. And I've put a link up here so that you can see the video on how to make this step by step. Now, if you're like me, the first thing you do when you make something is you immediately want to make it into something useful. So what I thought I'd do with this is turn it into an electricity generator, because essentially it's a very easy thing to do. And to do that, what you're going to need is one Stirling engine, a coil of wire. In this case, this is... Um, 24 SWG, it doesn't really matter. 24 is kind of useful to work with. The other thing you're gonna need is a magnet. Now, I've got <laughs> this magnet, which is an N52, and it's got 26 kilograms of pull, which is quite a lot. If you watched the previous videos, you'll have seen this thing belt up and down at a rate of knots for the distance of about that much. And what we're gonna do, really, is affix the magnet to the membrane and then put it on the coil, and that's going to generate for us. In order to do that, of course, you need a bit of support structure. So that magnet, unfortunately, is relatively expensive. It's actually about £10, and I bought that just for this. So the magnet's quite expensive, and you've got to be kind of careful with it. The other thing you need is some kind of spool, because the spool will fix there. The magnet has to run freely in there. The spool fixes there, we stick it on the heat, it belts up and down, and we put a coil of wire on here, and that will generate. That's all we're going to do. Now, some things take a disproportionate amount of time to do. So this little spool here took quite a little uh, while to make, actually, and all it is is a piece of pipe the magnet will fit in, two plastic discs, so that we can wind the wire and have something to fix it for. But that took a while to make, and that's the most irritating thing to make. It took about an hour just to make that one little thing there. The rest of it is going to be much more simple than that. Then the other thing you need is some kind of rod. Now this is a 6mm nut, because that hole in the centre of the magnet is 6mm, so we're going to fix that to there, put the magnet on there, and as that uh, jumps up and down, the magnet's going to move. Obviously we need some 6mm nuts to fix all of that with, and then we need some tack washers to spread that load across the membrane a little bit. So those are all the bits that you're going to need to do this. Now, the first thing you need to do is break this down a little bit. We need to take the lid off. Now we sealed this with a bit of tape, so taking the lid off actually isn't that difficult. We just have to find the edge of the tape and unpeel it. Once you've unpeeled all the tape, you can just prise the lid off. There we go. Now that's the bit that we're going to modify. We need to modify that because we glued that piece of metal on before and we need it nice and new so that we can glue the other bits on. And again, to undo that, just unpeel the tape that we put on previously. If you want to have a look at what we did previously, then just look at the other video. And there we go. Once we remove the tape, and we've got it back to its original position. Now what we want to do is attach a new membrane to that and attach these so that the screw can go up through them. So there it is attached. So I've gone round the edges with brown tape in order to make sure everything's sealed and everything's secure and it stays on there. Now what we're going to do is take two of our tap washers and we're going to glue one onto the top and one onto the bottom and put this rod through them in order to make the carrier for the magnet. And the way you do that is a little bit of glue. This is cyanoacrylic glue, crazy glue, whatever you want to call it. And a little drop of that onto the rubber washer. and near enough to the centre. You don't have to be wildly exact, but obviously near the centre is better. So once it had dried, I poked a hole through with a needle, poked this uh, bolt through it and bolted it down. And you'll notice that's a coach bolt. The coach bolt, because it's a relatively flat end, so when it rides up and down, it's not going to hit this. Then I put another bolt on it just there, and it's time to attach my magnet. Like I say, I bought this magnet with a 6mm hole already in it, specifically so I could do that with it. And then pop another nut on the top of it. And there's our magnet with his carrier rod attached. So when that rides up and down, that magnet is going to shoot up and down. Now obviously the only thing I now need to do is to put some wire on my spool and position that so that the magnet can ride up and down in the wire. Now the beauty of this thing is those nuts will allow me to move that up and down so I can get it in a good position with that once it's fixed. 
Now, those nuts, in order to stop them riding up and down, a little spot of acrylic glue will take care of that. So a little, stop, a little spot of crazy glue will stop those unwinding. So that's the carrier all ready. Now I just have to wind some wire onto my spool. To fix the coil, all I did was glue on some little white legs and tape it to the lid. So the magnet now rides at about the centre of that coil and it's now ready to give it a go. Okay, so here it is ready to give it a go. I've just hooked it up straight to the meter, and because I've hooked it up straight to the meter, it's reading in volts AC. So we'll give it a go in a second, and we should get some voltage readings out of it. Now, this pipe, keeping that magnet moving in one direction, will actually make the thing a whole lot more stable. Now, we didn't really uh, take much in the way of engineering to do this. It's all basically roughly the center, roughly the right size of pipe, all that kind of thing. And if we put a water jacket here, then we get a better result out of it because, of course, what we're working with is temperature difference as opposed to um, straightforward heat we can get it to. So if we have a better temperature difference between the top and the bottom, then we're going to get a better result out of it. But let's whack it on the heat supply and see what kind of result we get. Now, it takes a minute or two to get going. It will self-start, but it's quite handy to have a little rod to give it a bash so you can see when it's actually going. So running away, producing 3.3, uh, 3 volts. So that's busy running away, producing 3 volts. So let's put it on the ampage and see what kind of amps we're getting. And there's the amp reading. So we're getting about mm, 0.1, 0.09 amps, something like that. Now obviously this works uh, better if we put a cold jacket around it because we'll get a better temperature difference. And the amount of engineering we put into this was not very considerable, this thing isn't even straight. But that's pretty cool. Really. This is on the amp reading, and um, it's in AC obviously, because I haven't put a rectifier on it, so it's chucking out in amps at the moment. And you can see it's about 0 0.17, 0 0.18. It should climb up as that gets going, because the heat will change it, and uh, change the speed, and that'll make the amps climb. Okay, so there you go, how to modify a Stirling engine so that you can use it to generate electricity. Pretty simple, really. Now. There's no reason you would just have to put that on a hot plate. You could, uh, in fact, just put a lens in front of it and concentrate the sun on there and it should work as well. Um, as I say, the improvements to make it really are a cold water jacket so we get that temperature difference and maybe a lens so we can shine, shine the sun on it and get that actually generating electricity out of, um, out of sunlight. That would be really cool. But I thought that was really um, fun to do. Now, I might put this together as a kind of kit. So, you know, stick all the bits in a box so anybody who wants to actually experiment with it can build a Stirling engine following these instructions and have a go themselves. Anyway, I thought that was interesting and I hope you thought so too and enjoyed watching it and thank you very much for watching.